South African tourism, a key contributor to the economy and continues to create jobs and social development. During the ANC manifesto, President Cyril Ramaphosa spoke about increasing support for the sector. Now we've got a new minister taking over from Derek Hanukong. We want to know what the new minister has in store for the department and for the future of South Africa. Mama Loka, Kubai and Gubane, thank you very much for coming in. What a, what a great portfolio you have to take over, one that is successful. Thank you very much, um, and indeed I am grateful. I'm looking forward to the portfolio, enjoying it. Obviously dealing with quite a number of issues that are the variety from bringing the tourists to the country, but getting South Africans to tour and making sure that it becomes an inclusive sector. Okay, let's talk about those issues. I mean, you know, one of my guests was saying earlier about the, the fighting between Hanukom and Gagaba and, and contradicting each other had a, a massive impact on the country and the visa system. Have we been able to pull ourselves out of that? Because I know it really affected international tourism in a big way. The unabridged certificate visa issue has been resolved. Um, we've finalized the issue at cabinet level and also the regulation was issued. So from where we're sitting, it's a matter under the bridge now. We're now looking forward okay, to making sure. Okay, under the bridge, sure. but it did yeah. decimate numbers. I mean, how have you been able to pull the industry out of what happened, or how do you propose to do that? Look, the engagement between ourselves as the department and the industry will be continuously working together. We'll have to make sure, we've, we've checked even yesterday, I was with the DG, together with talking with TBSSA, TBCSA, to make sure that we are on the same length, uh, we understand each other, together with South African tourism. So where I'm sitting, the regulations are published, anyone who's traveling, anyone who is supposed to be, the people who are making the bookings for all the travelers, that matter has been resolved. What we need to focus now is all the other issues that affect. I think, especially on the Anna Bridge birth certificate, is because it was affecting the countries that were mainly, and I think that was the misunderstanding in the public domain, that were mainly non-visa countries. On the visa countries, when you apply, you didn't, there were not much challenges. So we, lo we looked at that report, we could be able to see that it was within those areas. So hence I'm saying it's a matter that we've resolved. Mm. Now we're looking at the new challenges. Back? I, mean, what's, I mean, obviously it's clearing up that confusion, uh, so there's no lingering doubt. But how do you get people back now? I mean, what's the campaign going to be? Because obviously South Africa has to capitalise on its, on its beauty, on uh, the extraordinary uh, wildlife that we have. No, definitely. In terms of our work, we've got road shows in different... Firstly, we have offices. So we've got stations that we've got across the globe that we've in priority markets. We've looked at the reports that give us the research that gave us... These are the areas where your markets are. People who are looking at to come into South Africa and therefore making it easy for them to be able to access South Africa. That's the first step. So we are doing roadshows. For example, I will be on a roadshow from July going to several countries that are priority for us, for us to be able to engage with the role players specifically to be able to look at. Obviously, other address things like security concerns? Security concern in terms of our work. We are launching a, a campaign. I would not be able to go into detail now. We are at a final stage together with the security cluster. We'll launch it next month with uh, the Mpumalanga province on safe, just focusing on tourism. So there are mechanisms that we're putting together with the security cluster in Mpumalanga as a test, and then we'll move immediately to KZN. So we're targeting the areas where we have high volumes and later we'll roll out across the country. I mean, that's good safety. to hear because, you know, I lived overseas for, for quite a long time. It was one of the questions that everybody asked me. I mean, everyone wants to come to South Africa, but they're all concerned about the, the safety. So it, it's obviously, it's a... It's, it's two way, Jen. Let me just say two way. One is that at times it's one incident that gets overblown. Yes, one incident is one too many mm. in terms of incident. Are we way too much like other globally when we compare? Because you've got to do comparative analysis where you check are we compared to other countries? How are we doing? So it has been unfortunate that even though we're not the worst in terms of high security, but we want to make sure that shocker. we eliminate. Yeah. We eliminate yeah. that completely where our tourists can feel safe and that's our priority so that they can be able to come. But I think the other area that we've, we, we've not paid attention to even in our conversation is getting South Africans themselves to tour their own country. Yes, I was going to ask you about that because it's hard now, isn't it? I mean, we've got the, the fuel price which just keeps going up and up and up 
at the safety concerns and, and you know, tightening of their belt. So how do you get them out on the road and how do you make it affordable for South Africans? Actually, that's, what, that, that's the issue. We're working on a campaign that will launch as well that will be able to showcase in terms of reliable budget within affordable budget where we can be able to say, okay, this is where you can go with this budget because that's one of the things we have picked up. One, it's around affordability in terms of South Africans to travel. Secondly, it's around the issue of, do you have variety for me? I'm a mother, I have children of different ages. Do you have a package that can be able to have accommodate me? Mm. Or I'm a mother, for example, somebody was saying, I'm a mother with seven children. You hardly find packages that speaks to me as a mother with seven children, for example, where I can be able to say I'm sleeping in a room, I have access to the children in both rooms, for example, in terms of hotel stay or even your BNBs. So those packages, but I think it's affordable in terms of traveling. You find quite nice spaces in across the country where it's affordable to travel. BNBs in the country, for example, when you go on the side, you want to go to Mpumalanga, you go to BNB, you find it for 500. You find some of them lesser. Off-peak is just to share that information that you can still travel, choose off-peak times. For you to travel, you can still enjoy because off-peak times, the prices are reasonable. Peak yeah, times, South Africans just really you know, don't know, do they? They don't <laughs> know. That? Those are the things that we need to be able to educate South Africans to say, if you travel during this time, you take leave, you are tired at work, you've been working, you've got your annual leave, then you can travel and have a holiday during the week. You stay somewhere in Bila Bila, you stay somewhere in Kruger during the week, the prices are reasonable. Okay, talking about Kruger, so we are known for the big five. There's legal hunting, mm -hmm. there's you know, canned hunting, all those sort of like rather controversial issues. How do you balance the two? How do you, how do you attract people to come to this country without destroying what we have? And let's not even get into the rhino. <laughs> I think the issue for me will be around communication being able to do advocacy work, make sure that people, when they visit the areas, they know what is allowed, what is not allowed. Obviously, we do that with our tour guides, where they explain when you get to a site to say, this is what you're allowed to do, this is what you're not allowed to do. Obviously, we've seen incidences where people were told not to drive in these areas. They get to drive in those areas, and then they get to encounter the wild animals because they're literally not unta they're untamed, they're fine. That's how we want them. Mm -hmm. So those are the things in terms of communicating and making sure that our tour guys, the people who interact with our tourists, are able to explain to the better benefit of that. And one of the areas where some of the people have been engaging with me saying, try and make sure that even when your tour guides are trained in different languages, because sometimes the language, for example, we're targeting China to bring more Chinese into the country because we think it's our target market as well. Okay, they I'm going to jump in here very quickly. Yeah. Chinese target market, they love our rhinos and the rhino horn. No, I mean, how much of an education uh, mission do you have when it comes to the rhino? I mean, firstly, training South Africans, that it's something yes. that they should be proud of, they need to protect, and they need to do something now. We'll work, with together. We'll work together with the people who are organizing their trips, because mm. these are agents abroad that we'll work with, we'll interact with. We've committed to having constant interaction with them. I've received some of their feedback where they are raising concerns about our safety, about the issues that they think, especially the language barrier. So we'll look into that to close that gap so that it can be explained properly in Mandarin to those who are coming, if we have a number. We have a couple of those who also can explain in other languages, French, the major languages that we think the countries that we're targeting are. Yeah. One of the things that we we'll look into is to talk to the partners. For example, we look at India as one of the, our potential market. What is it that we can do to enable that market? For example, there isn't a direct flight between South Africa and um, India. Are we able to get that? Obviously, yeah, as the tourism, as tourism department, yeah. we can't do it. We'll rely on the partnership, on the engagement with various sectors to say, look at the potential, look at the economic benefit. And, and what about a new market? Where are you looking to, to gain some kind of access? Look, we, that's why I'm, I'm mentioning those markets because those are, in terms of our, our research, those are showing potential for us to increase, including 
by the way, Nigeria is a potential market, quite a lot. And when we looked at the, it's not an issue of access, it's an issue of the visa, not even visa regulations, but the processing of it. And, and that's that, going to be more streamlined, I believe. And, and from Minister Muswaledi possibly will share with you, they're looking at e-visa, and we think uh, once they do that, it will be able to unlock quite a lot of things. And obviously the engagement with us, with the various portfolios, because now what President said to us is that he wants to see us more collaborating and working together as various departments so that we can be able to achieve our objectives more, in, more quicker and easier. When I last spoke to Derek Hamacom, he was just saying that inclusivity has improved in your area, but obviously it's not where it should be. Yes. What, what, what are you going to do about that? Yes, inclusivity has improved, um, but not yet where we can. A lot of people will definitely say we can do more. We just recently now appointed a new BE council. We'll sit with them, work with them, so that we can make sure that our targets are realistic, our targets are achievable, but work together with the partners. Because one of the things that is important is to be able to have a buy-in from everyone. Where they're critical, it's not only about, because others are thinking that township economy will be able to give us that. It's not only about that. It's also about making sure that the transformation side and making sure that inclusivity, everybody that needs to be a player, have an equal opportunity to be a player. And that are all found, levels. Yes, it's all level. I found most of the partners willing to engage, willing to say we are prepared because we understand it's in the best interest so of the So which area country. still needs to be dragged up? Um, hospitality still in the hotel side. Um, we still have to move a bit. The tour, um, tour guides, in terms of the formal and informal ones, we still have to make sure that we do so. Those tour, tourism um, agencies as well, we still have to do quite a lot. What are your projections and what are you expecting for the next five years? And what sort of factors do you bring into play that will determine the, the outcome of your success? Um, it's, it's, it's various areas that we have to pay attention to. As I said, we have to pay attention more onto our domestic market mm -hmm. so that we can get domestic traveling more increased because we think it's huge potential for us, especially the young generation. We think these are young people who are go-getters. The country has so much to offer. Um, what do they call hiking clubs are growing today. So we think if we potentially grab that market, properly. We can be able to get a lot of South Africans to travel. The second area is to be able to look at the areas that I've talked about, the potential markets. Mm. Look at the areas to say what is possible with them, what is it that we can do, what is locking they are traveling to South Africa so that we address those issues. I've mentioned we've done the analysis now. We're sitting the whole week, this week and last week, looking exactly to say what is it that we need to do in those markets that we can be able to do. We've got our game changer to say these are the five areas, domestic, international, look at the offices. We're thinking that it's not necessarily that we need to open new offices. I know some of our partners have said open offices here increase. It's not necessarily that from our side. We think we can leverage from the offices that exist and what government has in those countries. But what we need to do is to make sure that the process of coming to South Africa is smoother, it's easier, and conversation with the people who are organizing these trips are critical, especially at from a ministerial level, because then they will be able to believe in the story, one, they will believe that there is authority in taking decisions, because definitely if it's a minister who says, this is what we need to do, we need to unlock, all that has to be able to be done. And the role players, the officials in the department will know that we have to do it. Well, Minister, you've got a big job ahead of you and I'm, I'm sure you're going to be successful at it. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you very much for the opportunity.